Hello, I am Bishop Earl Boyer of the Diocese of Lansing. For the next 34 days, we will be reading the book of Exodus together. This is the second book of the Pentateuch, the five books, as they came to be known by both Jewish and Christian peoples. This book is all about God's formation of a people of the covenant. God will only make such a covenant when the people have been freed of their past shackles. Here we can see the need to be freed of the chains of sin and slavery to sin. Having achieved that, God will then seek their cooperation, their freedom, to accept the relationship he is offering them. Thus we have the wonderful pilgrimage to Sinai and the completion of the covenant through the sprinkling of blood. Thus too, our relationship with God as sons and daughters in Christ is accomplished through his blood. Finally, there are expectations that this new people will be faithful to God even as he has been faithful to them. Hence, we then find the commandments and the other laws of the Old Testament. Here, we see the need for us to put on Christ since we have been redeemed by him, that is, that we embrace the law of the Spirit. The final six chapters of the book deal with the layout of the Ark of the Covenant and the materials surrounding the method of worship. I encourage you to read these on your own. The saddest part of this book of Exodus is the several occasions of failure on the part of the people and their leaders. The golden calf, the complaining about water and food, the lack of courage to take the land promised them, and so many other events are part of the human story. Though freed by God, we are all subject to temptation, and unfortunately, we give in. God may keep us a while longer in the desert, but it is only so that we might be formed more closely to be his people and to reaffirm for us that he is our God. As we read and meditate on these various chapters, let us know that Jesus is our new Moses, whose only desire is to form us to be his brothers and sisters. He too, like Moses, does so with faith, with love, and with firmness, always to our good.